Hey, welcome back. This is the video I was talking about in my previous video where I reviewed the YI M1 Micro Four Thirds mirrorless camera. Uh, if you have any interest in mirrorless cameras or Micro Four Thirds systems, I recommend checking it out. Might be for you. But this is the cool trick I want to talk about. So I, of course, being a filmmaker and making movies, uh, I grew up in the 80s and watching the films of the 80s and things like Kubrick, I fell in love with the look of anamorphic photography and anamorphic uh, filmmaking. And in this uh, little video, I'm gonna show you guys a trick if you wanna get into anamorphic filmmaking and how to shoot anamorphic. Uh, before I start, really quick, uh, to recap, if you don't know what anamorphic is or means, it means you use a special lens in front of your camera and in expensive cases, in real film shoots, they have anamorphic lenses. Uh, that pretty much compress the picture and uh, so you get more data, more information on your frame. And then in post, in the old days, you'd have a lens you'd put in front of the projector that would then unstretch it. But these days in post, squish the vertical so the horizontal gets longer and you get that nice 2.35 aspect ratio, nice widescreen cinematic look. Some cons to doing anamorphic photography and anamorphic filmmaking usually is things like you need more light in general. You need a lot more light to actually film. Um, that's why people usually use spherical lenses in movies and kind of letterbox it afterwards. A lot of directors do that who shoot very widescreen epic movies are actually still just shooting on a 16-9 frame. So what I want to show you here is uh, in the old days I would shoot um, anamorphic using my 5D uh, an L lens, and then this guy on the end here, which is a this is a Panasonic LA7200. It's uh, an adapter here. It's just just this part, this part, this part, this part. Still new to this. Still learning YouTube. Be kind. No no bad comments. Uh, it's this area here uh, to here that goes on top of the lens. It's actually a screwed on right now to the L lens, um, and it's sort of a oval shape in the lens. Uh, and that oval shape is what gets you the anamorphic squeeze look. So what I do is I walk around with this, this bugaloo and I shoot with him and I get back and in post I unsqueeze the images. I'm gonna put a few up here so you can see what the 5D anamorphic shooting looked like. Um, but the downside here is that this is incredibly heavy. This thing weighs a ton. The camera's heavy, the L lens is heavy, and the LA7200 isn't light itself. The LA7200 was actually invented to squeeze old 4.3 video into a 16.9 and it's just sort of been bastardized to do like a 1.3.3 anamorphic and it's a great tool. You can find uh, the LA7200, the Panasonic LA7200 on eBay for low end 500, high end like a thousand. Um, I haven't looked recently but that's what it was going for over the past five years when I was using it. Okay so let's put this big guy down because he weighs a ton and let's look at this. So this is the YI M1 mirrorless camera. Uh, like I said, if you want to know more about the camera itself, uh, check my previous review where I talk all about it after shooting with it for a year. And on the end of this guy is what they call an SLR Magic anamorphic lens. So another, another perk to this is that that uh, LA7200 adapter I was talking about a minute ago isn't made anymore. You can only find them on eBay. Um, they don't make them. So if you want one, you have to go hunt and find it. Uh, this guy though, here on the YI M1, uh, they still make these. Uh, they're expensive. They run between 800 and 1100, uh, new and used. Uh, but they're much lighter weight than this this bad boy. I mean, look at the look at that size difference right there. Look at that. It's, a, it's immense. This thing is very light. I mean, the camera itself is a pound. I think the SLR Magic, because there's a lot of glass in there might be a pound or a little under so maybe two pounds versus this thing feels like i don't know five maybe maybe around there it's pretty heavy all in um and i have on this uh a 25 millimeter uh lens a panasonic 25 millimeter lens which of course you know in micro four thirds talk that's like a 50 millimeter natural lens on this guy and i'll tell you this is a anamorphic ninja you can take this thing anywhere uh, it just looks like a camera, but man, the, the, the quality of the anamorphic shots you get are fantastic. Um, I'm going to put some up here so you can see them. Uh, this is all shot in San Francisco. Uh, it looks great. It just looks amazing. The YI M1 does shoot film. It does do a 1080p 60 and a 4K 30. So if you want to try and shoot a little bit of anamorphic stuff, that works too. But I love shooting stills with this. I love shooting anamorphic stills 
with this setup wouldn't swap it for the world so i think i'll probably just leave it in this mode so i can just take it with me wherever i go and shoot in essence a pocket anamorphic kit it's fantastic so just want to share that with you guys um any questions uh feel free to put them in the comments uh anything you guys want to know more about anamorphic photography or anamorphic filmmaking ask me in the comments uh i'm here to field questions um I have a short video where I tell you guys who the hell I am and what I'm doing here and you can learn about my work history and why I'm here talking because I have 20 something years of making movies and doing professional photography and I'm here to kind of share tips, tricks and cool things to you guys. So if you like what you saw, hit subscribe, hit the uh, bell icon so you're always notified when I post something new and please come back and check out all the different weird cool stuff I'll be doing. All right, thanks. See you later.